Nityananda, with the auspicious grace and blessings of my Guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda Swami, our Swamiji, I welcome you to this video where I answer from a different angle of why sannyas, why you should take sannyas. So for those of you who are watching a video for the first time about sannyas, sannyas is basically a Hindu monk, someone who has devoted their life to the pursuit of achieving enlightenment and sharing the sciences with the whole world. And I'm a sannyasi in the Nityananda Sampradaya, a Purna sannyasi in the Nityananda Sampradaya under the direct guidance of Swamiji. Now, one of the main differences of being a sannyasi versus not being a sannyasi is the answer to this question. What drives you? What motivates you to do what you do to achieve what you achieve. Now, before I became a sannyasi, I was a working professional working in Manhattan and had a typical business type job. In that world, it is possible that you have a passion and you work in the field of that passion and you are around people who are passionate about the same thing and you're motivated about just achieving making that passion a reality. But most of the times, I'll say 98% of the times, the whole outlook on life, what's driving us, ends up being what? Fear or greed. Fear of not wanting something to happen, or fear of something that may happen, or greed to acquire something and you end up chasing the fear or the greed and get lost in the chase. And Swamiji has always said, even if you win the rat race, you're still a rat. So despite sometimes our very youthful ambitions and desires and goodwill and um, outlook on life that we have when we're entering into the workforce or when we're younger, in high school, middle school, um, grade school, we feel everything is possible. We feel we can achieve anything and that life is good and life will give us. If you're lucky, you've had that kind of childhood. But even if you were blessed to have that kind of outlook in life as a young person, almost without fail, that gets diluted or that gets put on the back burner because of the pressures from the society from family, the pressure to earn, the pressure to um, not just earn but live a certain lifestyle, which ends up being a lifestyle for you, then a lifestyle for you and your spouse, then a lifestyle for your children, then having a certain education level for your children, supporting them, making sure you pay for their college, then making sure your grandkids are okay, then making sure you're ready for retirement, Meanwhile, all of our dreams, our passions, end up going flat. They end up being put to the side. Or we just may do them once a year or dabble in them. But we've lost touch with those passions and those interests that sparked our inspiration when we were younger. As a sannyasi, there's no scope for being driven by greed nor is any scope for being driven by fear. See, we've cut all ties, so we're not working for earning money. There's no income involved. So the obviously the, the common goals of acquiring wealth or having certain finances is not there. So the greed is not there. And then the fear of losing something or someone is not there because we've already taken that step on our own. So then what drives you? What actually will push you in that kind of state? And it's an uncertain state because we have not been in that state before. And part of our process is answering this question and living this question. And for me, what I found Swamiji is trying to teach us, is teaching us, is showing us, is that you have to be driven by your own inspiration. 
your own will persistence, nothing else. That inspiration comes for sannyasis of the Nityananda Sampradaya, obviously our connection to Swamiji, what he shows us, how he's helping the world, how we want to be a part of that and help people, and never losing that context. See, our context is the most important thing we have because we don't have anything else besides the context for which we took this decision. So always remembering that I have taken up this lifestyle, I have taken up these vows, I've taken up this path, because why? Because I want to achieve enlightenment. I want to be established in that space of enlightenment. I want to be in oneness with Swamiji always. And I want others to also feel that and experience that. That's all my life purpose is. Then constantly reminding yourself of that context keeps you on that path. So you can imagine what a beautiful context and journey that is. Just, it's so simple. And just having and maintaining that context, it, context itself transforms your life. All the unwanted thoughts, desires, you can easily put them, just drop them, make them redundant because the context has no room for that. When you're going into like a low mood or some kind of depression or um, something is triggered inside of you, if you remember the greater context, that you are here to enrich others, you are here to spread Swamiji's teachings and help them the way you are helped, then there is no space for all of these low emotions, low moods. So the context itself gives the solution to pull you out. The context holds you up. So, but whereas in the outside world, so to speak, someone that's you know not living in the Adinam or not a sannyasi, the context is only the bank balance. The context is making ends meet. The context is comparison. The context is confusion. The context is I want to do this, but I'm forced to do this. So obviously there will be a lot of unhappiness and lack of fulfillment, which these incompletions are not just emotions. They manifest into greater problems, diseases, health issues. And then we get so far away from who we are that sometimes it seems impossible to get back. So as a sannyasi, if you take up this path, if you've taken up this path, you've done such a huge blessing for yourself because you literally carved out a path that allows you to achieve what your purpose in life is and a path that by its very nature reminds you of what your purpose in life is and of course all of this is under the guidance and blessings of Swamiji so Wherever we get stuck, there's always a solution. There's always Swamiji to take care and we know he's holding on to us <clears throat> no matter what. He's holding on to us more than we are holding on to ourselves. So this is kind of a glimpse into the context of a sannyasi. If, if any part of this is resonating with you, you should really take up the path because you've already caught the smell of the Maya matrix. And once you smell it, you really need to just drop the stench and come out of it and see it for see it for what it is. And you have an option now. Before, many of us didn't even know about sanya. So even if we feel these things about the outside world, there's no other option. You may go to a yoga class thinking you're doing something. You may visit some, you go on a retreat or something. Something where it's very temporary. But with sannyas, it's an opportunity to make a permanent transformation and the pathway for a permanent breakthrough in your life. And it's not just some new concept. Sannyas is part of the Hindu tradition, Hindu religion. So it's been around for thousands of years. So there's a real purpose, a real utility value to taking up sannyas. So thank you so much for allowing me to share about what what drives you. 
what drives a sannyasi versus what drives someone who's a non-sannyasi and why it's such a liberation to be driven by inspiration and love and compassion as opposed to anything else that society that we typically are driven by in society so hopefully some of these words have made a click and I'll share some videos where Swamiji talks about sannyas and gives um, the full context of what it really means. So thank you so much again for allowing me to share and uh, hope you have a wonderful day in Nityananda.